There we go. There's my game face. That's your game face? <laughs> I wish I had a kazoo. Not a kazoo. What's it called? What's the... Kazoo! You know, you blow the little thing and it flips out. Oh, I don't know what that's called. Ah, it's a party favorite. You see me at the kids' birthday parties. I would say happy 2024, everybody. Oh, yeah. 2024. <laughs> Today is New Year's Day as we record this. It is. So the big question is this. How are leaders like you that recognize people and technology are the backbone of the company they're building continue to make progress when they have no clear idea on how to develop individuals and utilize technology in a way that helps them remain profitable? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is Tom and Michaela, and welcome to the Heart and Hustle podcast. It was it was funny because we're like prepping at the end of last year, which was yesterday or last night. <laughs> yesterday. Trying to get like all of our accounting stuff like ready to go oh and gosh. say, okay, how do we have this postmarked on this date and this date on this date and this date, this expense at the end of the year, and clients and customers emailing me, texting me. Process All our day. payment. Process, process our, our payment. payment. Process, process our, our payment. payment. And by the way, I want to buy this and I want to do this up until the last hour yeah. and even into this morning. No, well, apparently we aren't the only ones. We're not trying to figure ones. out our accounting and finances at the yeah. end of 2023. Yeah, it's not. It's it's part of it's part of the life. And I guess unless you live and breathe and you're inside that life, you'll never really truly understand what that means. Yeah, it's. It's a whole different experience on this side of the table than it is, yeah, for a lot of people. It is, it is. Well, in, in 2024, obviously you know because you've been part of this with me and this journey and kind of finding our voice. I'm not sure what episode that was. Maybe McKenna can find out when we said, hey, we got to find our voice and see where we're at. I don't think we've Podcast. found it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, so we're... We're kind of tweaking Heart and Hustle a little bit, and it's you know Heart and Hustle LLC. It's it's been a company for you know a solid year and a half, two years now, and um, probably more close to a year and a half, maybe ish legally. Yeah, yeah. Probably. And so you know we've we've always kind of had this issue like finding our voice. Who do we help? How how do we help? You know, yes, we've had great customers. Yes, we've had wonderful relationships. And um, I think we've helped a lot of companies, a lot of people. But it it gets blurry into who are we really trying to focus on? Who are the individuals? Who are the people? What type of companies are we truly wanting to work with? I think we've really done a good job of narrowing that down. We have. And our niche, so to speak. Yeah, our, our niche. I think that's, that's always important. On the Soren Group side, on our IT services side, it's just like a it's like, we'll help anybody and everybody. And we probably should narrow more of a niche on that one too. But at the end of the day, um, that service is is really broad. I mean, IT services can really help a lot of folks out there. Um, however, Heart and Hustle, the services of building culture, building internal communication, building your vision, your mission, your company, brand, who you are, what you stand for, that although that can translate into many different types of companies across many different entities, we just kind of came to the point of who do we focus on? Like we can't be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. I wish we could. Yeah. I really wish we could. However, we have expertise. We have, uh, I think deep foundations into three different segments. And I think we know who we want to help. So 2024 is the launch of that. Heart and Hustle is, you know, although we will help other companies, I think, if needed, if asked. But from a pure marketing sense. If it fits. Know, if it fits. Yes. If it fits us. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody wants to work with us. No. <laughs> because, Don't blame them. <laughs> because sometimes we're, we're our own special kind of effed up. <laughs> <laughs> Who you want to call it? But that? you know, we're successful. We've done a really good job with all of our companies. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so going into 2024, Heart and Hustle is going to be really focused on three different verticals. The first one is IT service providers, MSPs. I hate that word, but MSPs, focusing on helping MSPs inside of their particular area to really help build their internal teams, their brand 
their companies, their vision, their mission, what that looks like for a managed IT service provider. And that's tough. You know a little bit about that. We know a hell of a lot about that. 25 years of working inside that market to that area, I think we've done a good job. Now, I th- I'm not sure here. I, For me, it's personal because it's like, how do I attribute what I want to teach into even our own IT services company? Mm-hmm. I think we're doing a good job with that. But it's like, how do you step in, step out of, inside of that world? So I've been my own best test tube baby, I guess, if you would, for the past several years. What to do and what not to do. Well, you get mixed up. It's like, you know, one day you're, you're in full operational mode with down equipment, down servers, and you get it being a CEO of a company and trying to manage this stuff. But then you take a step back, and we've said this before, like, what happens if we take 10 feet back and we're consulting with ourselves? What would we say? How would we do this? And how do you empathize with people? And I truly believe, as I think you probably would too, but you don't, you're not able to really truly empathize with that person until, until you're really sitting in their shoes or you can feel like you're sitting inside their shoes. Been there, done that. Yeah. It's like you can give advice all day long, but anybody can give advice. We have a lot of experience as far as a lot of like, yeah, we tried that. This didn't work out so good. Yeah, we tried this. This this went pretty well. I mean, we have a lot of trial and error under our belt. We have. That sort of stuff. We have. And since the day that we're started, since day number one, with inside the company, we have always, and I use the word hockey stick, but we have always increased revenue, sometimes double, sometimes 50%, sometimes 80%, but year after year, after year, after year, after year, we've increased revenue. And we want to share that. We want to show people how we did this inside of our own companies and kind of show these IT service providers out there, these these companies that are anywhere from five to maybe 20 to 25 employees on what we did to kind of make it to that next level. Yep. And for me, I'm super passionate about it. I mean, that is, you know, kind of a, as I get older, kind of my next stage of life, it's, it's, it's what I really want to do. I want to show the new Toms out there mm-hmm. what does work and what doesn't work no matter what anybody else says. So that's number one. That's niche number one. MSPs. Niche number two, and this is no particular order, let me say. Startups. Yep. Because you know what? I was thinking about this over dinner tonight. We had a damn good dinner, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. It was pretty kick-ass. It it was pretty kick-ass. It wasn't kick-ass in my omelet breakfast, but nonetheless, it was pretty good. (laughs) Whatever. You always got a (laughs) one-up. I know I do. But startups, like... True startups. I'm not talking about the guy in his basement or, you know, the girl in the coffee shop, you know, kind of hoping and dreaming that they're putting their their company together. I'm not talking about the person that gets their funding from some other company and they're not actually work for it. I'm not talking about those types of startups. I'm talking about the startups, the scrappy ones like me that started out in my basement. And after a few years, I'm inside of a leased building. I've made that jump. I'm inside of a real building now where I have a real commitment. I have maybe two, three, four employees, and I have no idea what it takes to manage them. I have no idea what it takes to actually have this thing, this baby, Mm -hmm. that now I have to care and feed, much less take care of as far as payroll and taxes and all the other stuff. Like, holy crap, this is real. I'm going down the road now. I can't stop. It's kind of like Audrey, right? Our daughter. She's learning to drive. She's doing a wonderful job, by the way. Like no wrecks, no issues. She's, she's doing a great job. But it's just like that first time you take her on the interstate and she takes that on ramp <laughs> and she at that point fully commits because she knows that semi is coming. Cars <laughs> are in there. Get on the road. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, I better step on the gas, sister. You're moving. Oh, get Eighty miles an hour, seventy-five miles an hour, and at that point, you just know you're on, and you're not getting off because that adrenaline is there. It's fighting you. It's just like you—you you have to keep moving. It's those people, those people that know that. Oh crap! I did this. I'm doing this. 
I've fully committed. I fully committed. It's go time. Now what? But that person, that startup, that founder is 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 really honed in on what he or she does. They're really honed in on you know the app that they're building, the the service that they're they're trying to sell or the service that they're trying to proceed in. In my world, I when I did that, I was at a huge deficit because I was also a really smart geek, a techie dude. Like I could fix the problems, right? And that's been my downfall of my career is that I've been always able to help fix the problems. And so that took my eye off the business and not being able to focus on the business for many years. And that's where I made a lot of my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Looking back now as quote unquote grandpa, I can look back and say, you know what? I know where you're falling down and being able to have the ability to empathize with the person and show them what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of steps, you it's know, it's like now when responsibility, well, when, when we as heart and hustle, when we work with other companies, we go through these steps, we go through this model, we go through these tools, these 120 tools and check boxes and folders and, and presentations and, Day in and day out of just meetings and offsites and retreats that we do with these business owners. But at the end of the day, it's like bring the passion back to the niches of which you're passionate about. I love IT companies, love them because it's a whole different, unique full of people. I love startups because, hey, I was one too. Mm-hmm. And we work with a ton of companies out there now that are every stage of the spectrum from from a startup to maturity but i kid you not the startups the young ones not age-wise but company-wise those are the fun ones Mm -hmm. it's also the most highly volatile the most dynamic the most emotional Mm -hmm. i don't know got a lot to learn and a lot to win and a lot to. but i think where we come in is like how do you i know how i'm asking you but i think you know how too but getting that mechanism, getting that voice into working with people and having them understand that you truly do know what you're talking about. You truly do have the ability to empathize with them and feel as if you are inside their shoes where it's a week out. They can't make payroll. Now what? What do you do? We got the answers. I got the answers for all that. Yep. And go ahead. I Continue. Oh, continue. <laughs> I'm doing all the talk that night. There you go. But it's like, I was thinking at dinner the night and I was eating this wonderful beef, what was it called? Beef tips? Yeah, mashed potatoes. And mashed potatoes is a yeah. base, beef tips, gravy. Yeah. But I was thinking, here I am thinking about what to talk about tonight and how to think about this. And and I kind of came to this this thought process of like, when you're not afraid of where your next paycheck is coming from or where your next influx of money is coming from, you're in a much different world than if you're stressing over, holy crap, I got bills to pay, leases to pay, pay, payroll to pay. And how do you get to that point? How do you get to the point where it's just like, oh, not that big of a deal. There's only 30,000 in the checking account. That may seem like a ton of money to some. In my world, it's jump change at this point. But you may feel like I have 30 grand in the account. I have $60,000 in expenses coming due in 10 days. How do I get past this? What do I do? What could I have done in the beginning to set myself up so I would be able to make those payments? It's all about the company. And there are easy ways out of this stuff. It's somewhat at the end of the mind, simple. But being 23, 24, 25 years old, or even 60 years old, and never been through this before, these are life-changing, sleepless nights nice events. Right. Yep. And that's what we're here to stress. fix. That's what we're here to show you is that it's not that way. It really isn't. So do we stress over that sometimes? Yeah. Our pendulum swings big. <laughs> swings <Wide and> far. <laughs> Well, swings far to the left and swings far to the right. And it's like in the beginning it was, you know, you're playing in nickels, $5,000 bills. All of a sudden, 15, 20 years later, you're paying in $50,000, you know, 50 cent coins and dollar tokens and whatever you want to do. It's like, holy crap. So we've got MSPs, MSPs, IT service providers, startups, startups, 
And what else? The last one, near and dear to my heart. And I don't even know this is a official word in the English dictionary. <laughs> I think it's a Tom word. No, I've heard Tom's, of it. Tom's dictionary. But it's the couplepreneurs out there. Not a couplepreneurs. Couplepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Individuals that are together, married, or seeing each other, whatever it is. But they have an interpersonal relationship. And they're also in business together. And how in the hell does that work? Yep. Because that in itself, I think, is the struggle. I think that one there presents is, a whole new set of challenges. It's fifty percent <laughs> therapy and fifty percent business. And how do you commingle the stuff together? How did we do it? How are we doing it? Are we doing it well? Do we think we're doing it well? I don't. I know. I know. But <laughs> at the <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Here's where she goes private at 6 a.m. in the morning and she's uh, she goes, okay, guys, here's how this is going. But I don't know if you're anything like me. I can't say you are. But every day and every day I wake up, I live for you. I want to be there for you and, 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 and go through this journey with you. And business is second. But the reality of this story is that the business and the stresses of that drive me closer to you. Because I know you're my safe zone. Like you're always there. And it's this weird yin and yang pull. <laughs> like this, and I call it this ionic bond. McKenna, find, find the quote on the website, ionic bond, and stick it up there. But it's just like you're two things that are attracted to each other, but yet pulling apart. It's just, it's crazy. But I know for a fact, and I've talked to many other couplepreneurs out there individuals inside of both uh, the Florida area, the Tampa area, as well as our home state of Nebraska and the people that I deal with every day. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard because you hit this business side where things are stressful at home. Maybe there's somebody's upset with somebody else, or maybe it's over a very simple thing. But the reality is, is that that cannot translate into the business. Because there's business decisions having to be made and you can't take that personal shit to you to work and vice versa. You have very stressful meetings, very stressful things, depending on how close you're working together. Most of them in our world are very close. How do you not let that impact you inside of your home life? Especially if you have kids or family or whatever, whatever whatever else you have going on. It's a, it's a tough thing. It is. So I think we've been successful doing it. I mean, My goodness sakes, we've been doing it for a very long time. And I think in the beginning, it was like this dance. It was like, okay, he or she really made me upset at work or at home. And how how do you protect and, and hold together that relationship and that bubble so it's not touched? But my God, he pissed me off. And this is why. Or vice versa. Something happened at home. And I'm upset with her for something. Um, doesn't happen a whole lot, except when she makes broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of all the things, yeah. you're going to get upset about broccoli. That's funny. I think it also depends on the people. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm probably more high strung than you are on certain things. For sure. Mm-hmm. And I think you probably give me a lot of grace on a lot of things. For sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it does take a special set of nuts to <laughs> make sure that this thing actually does happen, right? But it does. I mean, it, it is a very interesting dynamic and it's not for everybody. Like we've talked to several people who are like, yeah, I could never work with my spouse all day. No, no. Nope. More people than not would say no. Yes, I know. Well, it's challenging. I mean, it's funny because Audrey and I were talking on our, I don't know, we went to target or something like that today hot mom saturday (laughs) yeah that's what that was (laughs) and you know she made some big decisions in her life this year she Mm -hmm. went from you know public school to online school where she's traveling with us working with us um doing school online online and she said you know what it was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And it was also one of, it's also been one of the most difficult. 
And why has uh, it been difficult? What what she say about being? I don't want to go personal. If there's anything you don't want to discuss, but why was it? What was the most difficult thing for her about that? Just the people. Adjust, no, just adjusting to. I don't think she realized how much self control she was going to have to have in some areas, mm. and so that has challenged her and made her grow a little bit. But, but outside of watching her grades and giving her some basic general coaching advice or maybe what we should do or what we should look at. I mean, we haven't helped her. She's been pretty amazing. She's been 14 years old and leading her own way. You know, I've realized that I'm probably just perfect and it's everybody else around me that's got issues. But anyway, we're getting away from the point. We are. So I think that's what couplepreneurship is like. I mean, it can be one of the best decisions you make in your entire life. That does not mean it's not going to come with challenges because we do have challenges and we always overcome them and we always grow from them and we always learn something right. from each other from them. But most people can't stomach what we've had to deal with. And so... What we had to deal with is much more than just normal couplepreneurs. I mean, it's not like we met when we were 22 years old and decided, hey, um, let's get married and start a business. Yeah, but how many people are like that anymore? No. Very few. Exactly. No. So we don't have any challenges that somebody else out there isn't going to have. Right. They ha might have a, they'll definitely have a def different set of circumstances, but they're still going to have those challenges. Right. And, and those challenges are what makes the challenges inside of work, inside of your business, all the more challenging. You know, and part of that is like when when you speak to people, whether it's an MSP, an IT service provider, a couplepreneur out there, or even a startup, the most minor thing, like what I would consider the most minor insignificant thing, the most minor thing to them is an entire black cloud, thunderstorm, full of rain, coming down now, the world's going to end and they can't sleep at night. And that's what's crazy. Yeah. So it's just like we're here to help ground, help bring peace and understand this is the process and start that journey for a year with each of those individuals and walk them through them and be their mentor. Yeah. Be their guide. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's 9 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. It's Christmas morning and you're stressed about something. We want to be there. We're there. Mm -hmm. It's a tough thing to do. It is. But just to know you can pick up the phone, have that phone call. God, I feel like I'm like a telemarketer <laughs> now. Like, pick up that <laughs> phone. <commercial>. Yeah. No. <laughs> has nothing to do with that. <laughs> but it's just I wish I at that point had someone that I believed in so much that I could pick up the phone and call them and that they were not a distant person. Like they weren't this mm -hmm. person. Like you just saw them online. You saw them on a video. You can't get a hold of them. I mean, everything's public. My number's public. Yeah. So I don't know. Not public, public, but public. <laughs> public enough. I don't know. So going into 2024, those are our big niches moving forward. We're going to be focusing this podcast on a lot of um, helping with those specific niches, startup, couplepreneurs, and also MSPs. And we're going to be categorizing, organizing, making sure that the voice is inside of inside that world, working with each one of those, posting them on our main channel at hearthustle.com, hearthustle.com, and also our YouTube channel, and organizing them in such a way that people can go find them with ease. And so that's it. But if anybody else wants to call us and twist our brains around a little bit, we'll be happy to help too. <laughs> no issue around that, but kind of focus on what you're good at. So I think we've been good at this. I think we have been very good at this. Yep. Closing thoughts for 2023, I guess, or moving into 2024. Anything on your mind? Nothing that we haven't already talked about. I think there's a lot of good things to look forward to. I think there's a lot of, forward motion happening all around us despite what you hear in the media or despite yeah, what you hear in media stupid yeah. focus on the good things and there are lots of good things 
You heard it here. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a happy new year. Follow us, like us, subscribe. I promise you, this point forward, there's going to be so much content coming out between our two faces. You're probably going to get as tired as she is of me pretty soon. <laughs> Never happened, right. dude. We love you all. <laughs> Bye. Bye.